Welcome, everyone. This is the Book Talk Nation event with Carolyn Sparks and Gwen Reyes. This will work a little bit like an author event in a bookstore. Carolyn will talk about her new book, How to Seduce a Vampire Without Really Trying. If you haven't purchased the book, you can do so at booktalknation.com or right here on this video page, and Carolyn will sign and personalize it for you. Uh, Katie Budget Books will fulfill all of the orders and ship them to your door. The sales for these signed and personalized copies will close tomorrow night, so you'll want to make sure you get your order in by then. There is a chat box underneath this video window. You can use that chat box to interact with Carolyn during the video chat and enter your questions. In about 20 minutes, Carolyn will enter, answer the questions from that chat and also answer some of the questions that you submitted ahead of time when you RSVP'd for the event. Uh, until then, I'm going to hand it over to our interviewer tonight, Gwen Reyes. Uh, Gwen's professional writing career began in 2009 following a three-year stint in the film festival world. As a member of the Television Critics Association, Gwen travels all over the country to interview your favorite actors and actresses. Gwen is currently writing her first book, a teen novel about young love and ghosts. So welcome, Carolyn and Gwen. And uh, Gwen, I will turn it over to you for uh, the interview. Great. Thank you, Dave. So, Carolyn, thank you so much for uh, joining us this evening. Thank you. You're welcome. So, how is beautiful Houston treating you tonight? It is already getting too hot here, and it will stay hot till next October. It's <laughs> sad. <laughs> I've been on the road for a couple of weeks, so I miss Texas really bad. I should be, so I'm excited about it being warm when I get home. <laughs> yeah, you're missing the blue bonnets. This is Blue Bonnet season in Texas. It's the prettiest time of the year for us. So true. So, How to Seduce a Vampire Without Really Trying. This is your 15th book in the um, Love at Stake uh, series. That you, is that, how does that feel, having 15 books under your belt now in this it's, series? It's unbelievable, you know, because it all started, of course, with How to Marry a Millionaire Vampire. And mm -hmm. when I... I, I sent in, my agent sent in the proposal, all I had was three chapters, I had no idea, you know, all of a sudden Avon offers me a two book contract, and I'm thinking, two books? I don't even know what to do with the second book, I mean, who would have believed it would go this long? I, I certainly didn't think, <laughs> I, you know, I've been living with these vamps for 10 years now. <laughs> but yeah, this is Have you told them to go away? Book 15. I don't have a copy of the book yet. They haven't arrived yet. This is a cover flat. But yeah, you can see Zoltan there. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, looking sexy. And then uh, on the step back, uh, there's Zoltan and Naona, who is the heroine. And she's uh, trying to seduce him. We'll see if she manages to do that. <laughs> I was going to say, she looks like she's trying pretty hard right there, and he doesn't look like he's really objecting too much. <laughs> oh, well, for those of the readers who've read the excerpt, it's up on my website, uh, www.carolynsparks.com. You can read the excerpt. And she is trying hard. I mean, she has him tied up and uh, to a tree. <laughs> he's on the ground, but his hands are tied up like this <laughs> over his head, and he's tied to a tree. And, and she's knocked him unconscious. <laughs> so, um, yeah, she, she's a tough lady. I mean, you know, she's a warrior woman, and she's managing to uh, to knock Zoltan out. And he's, of course, he's a vampire. That's not easy to do. So she is a tough, she's a tough lady. And when she makes up her mind to do something, she's going to get her way. And uh, so we'll see how Zoltan manages to handle her. You know, speaking of the fact that Neona is such a strong, strong character and is such a strong woman, and I think readers, we all love, we love us some strong female ladies. Um, wh where did she come from for you? Where, was, had she been kind of knocking around in your head for a while, or was did she just like appear and you were like, I have to tell her story? Well, but since this is book 15, you know, I tried to, the last thing I want to do is make all my heroes and all my heroines alike. I try to, you know, make each one individual and different. And the last book was um, The Vampire with the Dragon Tattoo. And that one, the heroine, she's a strong heroine, but she's strong in, 
in her brain. She's a doctor, and she was she was a I think she graduated from med school by the age of 21. She's a genius, but physically she was kind of a wimp. You know, she uh, wasn't, uh, and she got kidnapped. You know, she ha she went through a lot of troubles because she really was never a, a physical person. She was she was the brain, mm -hmm. and so uh, after doing her. I thought, you know, I want to do something completely opposite. I want to make a really tough warrior woman, and sort of like a Xena warrior woman. I, I don't know if y'all used to watch that show. My son loved Hercules yep. and Xena, and so we had to watch that, you know, every week. And uh, so this is my uh, rendition of Xena the warrior woman. Uh, she lives in a hidden valley in the Himalayas. And so it's like a cult of warrior women, Amazon type women that live in this hidden valley. And um, of course, only women are allowed in the valley. And so they can have daughters that they raise to be warrior women, but sons have to be given away. And uh, she has just lost her sister in battle. Um, if you remember from the last book, uh, Vampire with the Dragon Tattoo, the villain Master Han is on the loose in China, and uh, he and his vampire right. lords, uh, you know, they're 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 causing all kinds of trouble there in China, taking over land and terrorizing the people and so forth. And uh, they are they have found these women and they're trying to take over them and and discover their secrets. And so they had just recently had a battle, and there were only, I think, 11 or 12 of the women, and this battle just devastates them, and their number is literally cut in half, and they're all in mourning, they're in shock, and she has just lost her twin sister. Now, you can imagine how devastating that is. So when she finds this, captures this man, and he's beautiful, gorgeous, hunk, you know, muscular guy, and she's thinking, oh my gosh, I could have the best daughter ever with this guy. And so that is what, that's how you get the title, How to Seduce a Vampire Without Really Trying. Of course, she doesn't realize he's a vampire, and uh, so, but she, she's thinking, mm -hmm. I should have a daughter with this guy, and she will be beautiful and, uh, and you know, a great warrior, because he's a great warrior. She has a hard time... Uh, capturing him. <laughs> well, and that's what I was going to say. It's like, it's so cool to see um, a hero and a heroine that are both like kind of physically equal and mentally equal. And that's kind of what's fun about Zoltan and Neona is that they have that like equality that makes their back and forth really kind of fun. Yeah, this is a, this is a very physical book. Uh, I mean, it starts off that way too because of the minute they meet their right immediately in battle and then there, and then she's trying to tie him up and seduce him mm -hmm. and, and ravish him in the woods of course he's a vampire and he could teleport away but you know what guy who's attacked by a beautiful woman and tied up in the woods is going to teleport away you know <laughs> he's going to stick around and see what's going on you know because this is a beautiful woman yeah and he's intrigued by her i mean how many women has he ever met he's 800 years old how many? He's never met a woman who can, who can, you know, beat him in battle. He's amazed by her. So yeah, he's going to stick around to see uh, what's going to happen with her. And so it it does go back and forth. They're both equally strong. They're both equally smart. And and uh, and and the, sort of the joke is who's going to seduce who because it, it does go back and forth. He's trying to seduce her. She's trying to seduce him. Uh, they each have mm -hmm. secrets, and he's trying to figure her secrets out while she's trying to figure his out, and and it does go back and forth. I had a lot of fun with them. They're very well matched. And does that do you find that that because I sometimes have talked to a couple of authors who have you know kind of made mention of like that the, there are certain couples that when they're writing them are are you know really well matched or come out perfectly together, and other ones that they kind of struggle to find their commonalities. Do you feel like with this pair that they were from the beginning very well suited for each other? Yes, yes. They they hit the scene immediately. There was just chemistry right off the bat. And um, but you know when I'm writing, I tend to uh, I usually already have the heroes. 
because you know I have this bit after this is bit book 15 I have this huge family of <laughs> vampires and shifters and uh, you know everybody knows them and they're going when is Zoltan going to get a girl when is you know this person or that person going to get a girl and so I already know the guys uh, Zoltan's been around gosh for many many books he, I think maybe mm -hmm. five or so uh, or maybe even earlier. He's been around a long time and and single all this time. The all the other guys get you know they get the girl and Zoltan shows up in, too late. He even says you know I'm always too late. You know he's poor guy. He, he needs my oldest vampire. He's 800 years old. He's older than Roman. He's been around forever. But he can't find a woman. <laughs> and <laughs> so I, you know when I when I I already have the guy, so it's the women that I'm making up usually for the book. And so I do tend to try uh, to make a heroine that is perfect for the guy. So all that is figured out in advance so that when she arrives in the book, I've already, you know, she's, she's perfect for him. They just have to uh, figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and something that you mentioned earlier, um, while we before we came, before we went on the air, is that um, how to seduce a vampire without really trying has a little bit more of a mystery element to it than you've written before. Uh, what inspired that? Were you reading a lot of mysteries and you wanted to add that in, or was it just kind of um, something that naturally happened? Uh, I was probably from watching Sherlock. <laughs> but, <laughs> that Benedict comes out to do it every time. Really admired mystery writers because well for one thing I mean I, I you know I always write romance because I love romance I love watching a you know a couple fall in love I love that whole process of falling in love but mystery you know you've got to plan that ahead more than I usually plan you know I, I usually just sit down and start writing and uh, but the, the mystery element that did intrigue me I guess after you know this is my 15th book. After a while, you you want to stretch yourself as a writer and try something a little bit different. And and so I thought, you know, I'm going to try, you know, my usual romance, but with a mystery. And and then uh, I think it, it makes it a lot more fun uh, because you, as for the reader, while they're reading along, I, I lay. I had to be careful to lay out all the hints and and and. So I think it'll be fun for the readers to see if they can figure it out before, you know, Zoltan or Neona figure out what's going on, if they can figure it out. So it becomes a contest. Who can figure out first what's going on, you know, in this hidden valley? So um, I think that just added a lot of fun to the romance. And it makes and it fleshes out that story so much, too, by having them you know, having Neona have to keep secrets from Zoltan and then at the same time wanting to fall in love with him, but then, you know, there's all these elements. And then on the side of that, having this whole secretive world underneath the where she and her family are living anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, this cult of warrior women have been on their own for centuries and uh, never, ever trusted men. And uh, so she has grown up with this whole concept that men cannot be trusted and you never ever tell the secrets of the valley and so it he, he she won't tell him even though she's falling in love with him there's always this part of her that I can't tell and, and so he has to figure it out and um, it, it just I think it's it it makes it, it made it I think it'll make it a lot more fun for the reader, but it also made it a lot more fun for me as the writer because it gave me uh, mm -hmm. something, something different to try, other than the same sort of you know boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets her back kind of a thing. Uh, it, it, it stretched me. I had to try something new, and I really did enjoy it. It's gonna, I was just about to ask, like, if you enjoyed the challenge of kind of mixing genres a little bit. Yes, yes, and I, even in the book I'm trying writing right now, uh, it I I tried once again. I did something different in that book. I really don't want to go into it, but it's it's I did some things that I've never done before, and it was uh, it it made it it made it really more interesting for me as a writer, you know that 
I'm going to try something I haven't tried before. And um, that's that's the one I'm working on right now, which I, if you like, I can tell you the title. No one knows we the We would love to hear that. For Book 16. Oh, exclusive. Book 16 coming out at the end of December. The title will be Crouching Tiger, Forbidden Vampire. <laughs> Now that's like the perfect segue into my question that I have circled that I have to talk about your your titles for Love at Stake because you have like the best titles for these because if you're a movie lover or anything, these are just like the best. Do you get to have any hand in coming up with them or because they're just so clever? Well, thank you. It goes back and forth. I mean, How to Marry a Millionaire Vampire, that was that was definitely my idea. Uh, Vamps in the City was also mine. Um, the third book, Be Still My Vampire Heart, that title is my, that was my idea, but it wasn't the original title. Uh, that's the first book with the Scottish vampire. Everybody loves the vampires in the kilts. And that one stars Angus. And it was originally called Vampires in Kilts. Uh, sort of, you know, like men in tights kind of a thing. Vampires in Kilts. But, um, we changed the title, and uh, I, I gave them a whole list of titles. Actually, the one I wanted really badly was uh, To Kill a Mocking Vampire, because Emma's trying to kill it. <laughs> but that one didn't go. It, we ended up with Be Still My Vampire Heart. And then the next one, let's see, number four is uh, The Undead Next Door. Yeah, the end. <laughs> looking up at this, at all of my covers on the wall. Uh, You're looking at your cheat sheet. <laughs> the undead next door. I originally, had, because that's Jean Luc uh, Isharp, the French vampire who's a, a, mm -hmm. a designer, a fashion designer. I originally titled that one Vampires in Vogue, but uh, that didn't go over. And I, my editor came up with that title. And then the and by then that one hit the New York Times list. So then everybody wants to help me with the titles after that. And so the fifth book, All I of Want course. for Christmas is a Vampire. That was actually uh, that was the idea of the marketing department. Uh, they realized the book was coming out at the end of October, and they said, "Let's make it a Christmas book." And they said that would be a great title, and it has been a great title. That book has sold like crazy. In fact, Walmart still puts it out almost every Christmas as a Christmas vampire book. And uh, but what was funny oh at the gosh. time when I was writing it. It's like the Christmas story. It's at like the time a, that I was Christmas writing comic. it, it was set in the summer. And they and, and then I get a phone call, can you can you we wanna we want to name it mm -hmm. all I want for Christmas is a vampire. Can you make it Christmas? And I thought, well, okay. And so all of a sudden it got switched to a Christmas book. And I added the uh, vampire Santa Clauses and stuff in there to make it Christmassy. And then the next two, Secret Life of a Vampire and Forbidden Nights with a Vampire, those were named by my editor, Erica Sang, at HarperCollins. And then the eighth book was actually titled by the guy who does the covers, Tom, from the art department. I was in oh New York meeting Erica, and he came up to meet me. He loves my books, and so you, you can tell he puts, I have the most beautiful covers. Tom puts so much work and effort. You in do it. have very beautiful covers. Yeah, he loves the books, and, and so, but he wanted, he wanted a book called The Vampire and the Virgin. And, and he, <laughs> and Erica and I looked at each other like, oh gosh, really? <laughs> but, but we ended up with The Vampire and the Virgin. And and at the time when I was writing that book, my heroine was not a virgin, so I had to go back and re-virgin it. <laughs> but it worked out really well because the heroine in that book uh, is like a human lie detector. She can tell mm -hmm. when people lie. And so I thought, well, of course she is still a virgin because whenever any guy tried some lying on her, she knew immediately it was a lie. And so, you know... She remained a virgin. Uh, the next one uh, is Eat, Pray, Love, Pray with an E. And my mm -hmm. editor came up with that. And um, 
that book, that title is, I mean, I have gained readers that thought they were buying the other yep. <laughs> and, and they're reading it going, I don't remember this book having vampires in it. And, and it's Carlos the Were Panther, and they're like, where, where is this? But uh, It's like, where's, it's it's like, where's Julia Roberts? <laughs> I gained a lot of new readers by accident with that book. <laughs> And then we had, let's see, Vampire. And that's what I think. Yeah, it goes on and on, but uh, a lot of them from now on have my editors been helping me make them up. Oh, that's so cool. Well, they just are such clever, great, like little homages for movie fans and and for rate and for book fans. And so I just, I've always thought that your your titles were always just so clever and fun. Well, this, yeah, the uh, the. The uh, next one, the Crouching Tiger, Forbidden Vampire, that because it, it fits really well because they're still in China trying to defeat Master Han, and so um, mm -hmm. it has that whole Asian feel to it, and uh, and and they are of course allied with the Were Tigers, so there are there are tigers in in the book, so it worked really well. Perfect. Well, Carolyn, this has been an amazing chat, but I think we have a lot of fans and readers that are just dying to chat with you, so I'm going to turn it over to Dave, but thank okay. you so much. I can't wait to see you in a couple of weeks at RT. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have fun in New Orleans. <laughs> well, thank you very much, everyone, and so far. It's time for us to take a few reader and audience questions, and like I said uh, earlier, you can go ahead and type your questions. There's already been a bunch coming um, for Carolyn in the chat box, and she will answer live. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the first question that we had submitted, and it is from Dale. And Dale asks, I'm interested in how you started on your first book. And he heard that you had some cha just a few chapters written before you, you were signed. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Oh, okay. Well, actually, my first published book was an historical romance, so I already had, uh, had been published. Uh, if you're unpublished, it's probably it's going to be really hard to sell your first book with only a few chapters. Um, but because I was previously published with historical romance, Avon trusted that you know I can complete a book because I had already done that. So uh, I do write historical romances. Uh, they're just, uh, you, you'd have to go to my website to see them. Uh, they're not nearly as well known as my paranormal ones. <laughs> but uh, Yes, yeah, so I, I grew up mostly reading historical romance, but part of the problem is because back then there wasn't a whole lot of paranormal romance around. I, I realized, though, after I was writing the historical romance, I realized my favorite historical romances were always books like A Knight in Shining Armor. There were books that had a strong paranormal element in them, and that's when I realized, oh, what I really love is paranormal. And so uh, when I started uh, with the vampires and I my historicals are comedies I always knew I'd be writing comedies and to me vampires can be funny I mean what is undead it doesn't even make sense are they dead they're alive what you know what the heck is that and so to me uh, they, they've always been kind of funny uh, and and uh, my favorite vampire movies were the funny ones you know with uh, Leslie Nielsen and so, you know uh, dead and loving it or whatever it, that I, I think that stuff's hilarious so I knew if I wrote vampires it would be funny ones and so when I started the the first book how to marry a millionaire vampire I did um, I already had an agent so and I sent her the first three chapters she sent them out to all the publishers and it um, that was what in 2005 um, and Paranormal was just really really catching on and all the publishers saw that uh, it was a proposal three chapters and a synopsis and I within a week I had three or four offers from different publishing houses so that's how uh, whereas my historical romances I had a uh, proposal out on one of those and it sat on the editor's desks for an entire year before they wouldn't even look at it. Meanwhile this vampire proposal got uh, four offers in the first week. So I learned an important lesson then that you, you need to be marketable. You need to be writing what people actually want to read or what the publishers want to publish and uh, that gives you a, 
a, a much bigger chance of getting into being published and being a published author. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, the, uh, there actually is another question that kind of follows up on that, and uh, someone was wondering if you're going to be moving away from vampires anytime soon. Is, uh, w when is the next historical romance coming out? I don't have, a, I don't have one uh, really. I mean, I have one that's written, but I don't know w yet what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> and uh, it's a mail-order bride book. It, it's comedy, too. Uh, the, and I have some ideas, though, for a new paranormal series. So I, with book 16 that's coming out next September, I'm going, or next December, I'm going to give the Love at Stake series a rest. I know, I know I have a lot of readers that want it to go on forever, or, and then they want the children's stories, you know. And, but uh, I'm, I'm feeling a need to try something different, and, uh, but it will probably, I, I will always do paranormal. It's, um, it's sort of like once you're out of the box, you can't get yourself back in. I mean, once you've tried, paranormal is just so wonderful because you can just mm. do anything, anything you can imagine you can do, whereas with historicals, you have to stay w with what really ha was going on and what they really were wearing and really were saying and so forth, and so you're, you're confined that way, and which is okay if you're having fun with the story, but once you've, like for me, once I've tried paranormal, once I'm out of the box, I don't want to go back in. It's just too much fun to do whatever I can come up with. And I do want to try some paranormals that are just crazy ideas that I that I have that I that have been bothering me for a while, you know, and they want to be told. So I, I will try those and see what happens. Uh, the next question comes from I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Josie, and she uh, writes, "I love how you write." about all different cultures in your novels. Have you ever been to any of these places, Scotland or China, for example? Well, I've, I've been to Scotland um, and some places in, in Europe. But, uh, yeah, a lot of the places, like, I've been, uh, my books have gone to China, they've gone to Japan, they've gone to Thailand. Uh, they go all over the place, and unfortunately, no, I have not been to those places. I have to do my research online. Uh, and to get a flavor for a lot of that stuff, I will watch uh, Asian television. And uh, and now I'm addicted to Korean television, <laughs> but it gives me it gives me a good feel for the culture. You know how they address each other, and uh, uh, you know just uh, how they eat and so forth. So that when I'm writing these books that take place in Asia, I can try to get the feel right for it. Uh, in The Vampire with the Dragon Tattoo, I did introduce a, a Korean shapeshifter, a nine-tailed fox, because that's really popular in their culture, the nine-tailed fox. She's a nine-tailed fox shifter, and her name is Gu Mina, and Gu meaning nine in Korean. So I just, I've picked up some of this stuff and um, from watching Asian television, and that's helped me a lot, I think, with writing these books. I didn't realize when I first... Uh, made up Master Han and put him in China. I, I, I did that way back in book nine and didn't realize then that I was sticking myself in China forever. I mean, because they're going to have to go defeat Master Han. He's doing fine in China. He's not going to leave. They, if they want to defeat him, they have to go to China to defeat him. And so all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm stuck for a couple of books in Asia. But it's been fun. Uh, another question, once you come up with a theme, how long does it take you to write one of your books? I'm sure it varies, but um, can you give some examples or maybe a rough timeline? Oh, it can take me anywhere from four to six months, depending on how easy the book is. I mean, they're all hard, but somehow some are easier than others. Some just uh, flow. Um, for some reason, I find... Whenever I do a Scottish vampire, uh, when I did Angus's book and Connor's book, Vampire Mine, or when I did Dougal's book, uh, The Vampire with the Dragon Tattoo, those books just seem to flow from me better. I, I don't know, it's because I love the Scottish guys. 
are maybe because I am, I, you know, I have Scottish ancestry, but their their dialogue, their dialect comes naturally to me, and it just flows. But then other books, um, I have to struggle a bit to get to know the characters, you know, um, like Carlos the Werepanther. He was a lot of fun. You know, he's a Werepanther from Brazil, but I don't know anyone from Brazil, and I sure don't know any Werepanthers. So it was a little bit, you know, harder to get a feel for him. Uh, so some books are just take a little bit longer than others. Gotcha. I know a Werepanther if you want to meet him. He's, he's <laughs> oh, you did. Yeah. <laughs> um, how much time, and this is kind of on the, in the same vein, how much time do you spend writing every day? Oh, okay. Uh, that depends on how fa soon the deadline is or <laughs> or how far past it is <laughs> right now, gosh. Um, it's, it, it varies. Uh, when I'm beginning a book, because I, I'm, I am what they call a pantser, I write by the seat of my pants, I don't plan things ahead. It is in my head, but uh, gosh, you know, my head's a mess. So it's just... I don't write things out. I don't do character charts. I don't do all this stuff that some writers do. I don't actually want to know everything that's going to happen ahead of time because then I feel like I'm writing a book report instead of a book, and and it takes too much of the fun out of it. I have a I have an idea of how it begins and how it ends, uh, but I don't know really how to get from point A to point B, and that's the adventure. And it's an adventure for me too as a writer. I don't know exactly what all's going to happen. I also find that if I take my time, and I mean, I know my readers are always going, please write faster, please write faster, but if I wrote faster, I would be going from point A to point B in the quickest way possible. And I feel like I'm doing you a disservice as a reader if I do the most logical, quickest route from, point, from the beginning to the end. It starts to become too predictable. Mm -hmm. And if I'm predictable, I'm not doing my job. I mean, basically, I mean, I have to have I have to have surprises in there. I can't, you know, if it was if my readers could totally predict what I'm going to do next, they could write the books themselves. You know, they wouldn't need me. So I, I, I it's my job to to completely shock you, surprise you. Uh, you know, whether it was with laughs or with danger or suspense. But I have to uh, take the uh, the most twisted route possible from point A to point B, and sometimes that just takes a, a long time for me to figure out. One last question. We have time for one more uh, from Odessa, and uh, the question is: I was just wondering if there is ever going to be a mate for Laszlo in the near future. Well, Laszlo did. Me he, Laszlo fell for the nine tail. Fox and the Vampire of the Dragon Tattoo, and so uh, there, I think their romance may work. I, I because uh, she was just totally smitten with him, and Laszlo, he he needed that. He needed uh, someone who just thinks he's he's the best thing ever, and so it, I think it works out for them. Great. Well, I think thank you very much. Uh, I, that brings us about to the end of our event tonight. Uh, before I let you both go, I want to remind everyone about the books for sale. You can purchase a signed and personalized copy of How to Seduce a Vampire Without Really Trying right here on this page. Those sales will close tomorrow night, so make sure you get your order in by then, and Carolyn will sign and personalize the copy for you, and then Katie Budget Books will ship it right to your door. Uh, we'd like to give a big thank you to Katie Budget Books for hosting the event, and thank you to everyone who joined us tonight and submitted questions, and thank you to Carolyn and Gwen. It was such a thank pleasure you. having you enjoy, uh, join us tonight, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you, Dave. No problem. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Gwen. Thanks, guys. Take Bye. care. Good night, everyone. Have a great night.